Well, welcome everybody. Uh, my name is Via Williams. I am with Place, and I'm with my lovely co-host Sarita. Hello, everyone. Sarita Dua from Portland, Oregon, also with Place, and very, very happy to be here. Yeah, so we're here every Wednesday and um, uh, with the top in the business, right? The top uh, team operators in the in the U.S. and Canada talking about what works, and so that's what we're going to do today. Um, we're going to, we're actually going to have an interesting day because we're doing two shows in one. The first 30 minutes are going to be, um, Sarissa Jornod. I almost said Lair, but I didn't. Sarissa, <laughs> is it Jornod or Jorno? Jornod. 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 Uh, mm-hmm. and Brian O'Connell and Sarita is going to kind of take the lead on this interview because they're doing really well right now. And, you know, leading into this, this, uh, winter market, we're already feeling it. It was really important to us to talk to people who are, you know, doing things that are working right now. The second segment, I'm going to do a uh, an interview with Missy Webb in Oklahoma City, whose whose growth has been phenomenal. And I just want us to all track it, kind of like I did with Jay White, and just kind of, you know, walk with her through what her last few years have looked like and what's next on the horizon. And I think kind of like Jay, we're going to check in with Missy from time to time, kind of keep tracking her because we're going to see big things come from her. So there's some people that I, that I'm watching Jay and Missy or two of them that I just want to bring to you. I have a couple more. So that's how we're going to format today. So with that said, Sarita, um, take the floor, my friend. I'm excited. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. And I want to just, before we jump in, Power Playbooks is all about a weekly webinar with detail on what is working in terms of the actual playbook. There's a lot of podcasts and webinars out there where everyone just sort of talks, but our goal is to really get in the weeds where we need to so that you can walk away with actionable nuggets. So with that, let's start with Brian. Brian, I know you're from Fayetteville. Tell us a little bit about your team and how your structure is. Uh, thanks for having me. Really do appreciate it. And um honored to uh, have this opportunity. We, um, well, I'm a retired military guy and um, I retired out of Washington state, uh, out of uh, Puget Sound area um, back in you at the, um, J- the joint base, Lewis McCord. Uh, no, I was, um, I was at Puget Sound Naval Shipyard. Oh yeah. Awesome. Up at the Puget Sound. And then, but I retired out of Everett off of a little frigate, but then. Um, Thanks for your I- service. Well, thank you very much. Uh, it was it was a good time. I did. Uh, I moved over to some contract work out with the submarines at Sub Base Bangor, and then mm-hmm. took a contract um, at Fort Bragg with Special Forces back in uh, 2006. So I got here. I got licensed in 2007. As soon as I got here, um, I so I was dual dual career, and then in 2010 I. I just I left the uh, special forces community, and, and we just went real estate full time. I kind of did the Simon Sinek thing where I just burned the boat. I just went went all in. Um, I'd wasted eighteen years of my military service uh, renting and living in base housing, and uh, once I purchased my first home, it would change my life. So I, I said, you know, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to help people invest in real estate, and uh, when I launched my career in 2007, that was my mission. And uh, I did real well for myself. So then in clicking along 2011, I met my wife, Sharon. I met her on match.com and which it used to be shocking, but now it's like, yeah, how else would you meet somebody? Right. And then, um, so she was a nurse, been a nurse for 23 years. We, um, She always had a passion for real estate. Um, And I think that's one of the things in my profile that attracted her to me was that I was a realtor. So um, I I was getting real busy and I told her, hey, look, either you're going to have to help me or I'm going to have to hire somebody. So she quit her job as a nurse, came on. That was in 2013 or 12. I don't know. But in 2014, we came to Keller Williams and... um, started our team and fast forward now um we're you know we're our our agent count and our um staff count kind of up and down but um the, the last couple of years we've helped uh, over 400 families a year and this year 
Um, we're going to do about 325. And now we have about, I think, eight, eight buyer's agents, two listing agents, a couple of hybrid. Um, and then um, we have two full-time stateside admin and four, um, four VAs. Well, first of all, it's what an amazing story. You know, one, you both these are this is your second gig, if you will, after a full careers in different spaces. And then coming together and building out a team in a fairly new city for you as well. And averaging, you know, four, three to four hundred transactions a year. Congratulations. Tell us a little bit about the trajectory between let's say 2022 and and what you're gonna end up with 2023. What what stayed the same and what what changes did you have to make for the market of today? That's a, that's a um that's a good question because we we revisit that often. Um the 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 agent mindset that you know we all the Phone, sell a house, answer the phone, sell a house. That was a real thing. 2022, um, it was super easy to, to you know, we did take a slide in in uh, 23, just like Ben said, and in the, in the first quarter, but then it picked up again in the spring, just like he, just like he said. And I know we took a hit in the, in the spring or in the, the Q1, but as we went into Q2 and Q3, we were just rolling and, we saw, we knew what happened coming out of 2022, right? We knew how the market has shifted and um, people had to re-engage and build relationships. And it's all about having conversations, building relationships and follow up, follow up and maintaining that relationship. And then we got busy again in the spring and they let their foot off the gas. They started, they stopped, they slowed down on doing the activities. So as we were moving closer into Q4, we had to re-engage with them and remind everyone, hey, remember how you were suffering in Q1 and how we were purposeful with our lead generation and showing up as winners and having the conversations. Remember that? Well, you're going into Q4, we need to maintain this momentum so you're not feeling that pain that you felt in Q1. So that's kind of, we, we kind of learned and we, we, we saw that we were sliding back into our, our old ways and um, we made a really good change, you know, right, yeah. right around uh, the middle of Q2. I love that you kind of have that cautionary tale of like, this is what's going to happen again. Right. And, and the, the challenge, right. Is, is success masks anything else. So if you start getting busy, you have the excuse then that, Hey, I'm busy. I don't have to lead gen. I don't have to do this. I'm, I'm busy. This is great. This is what I wanted. But as we know, that sets us up for our roller coaster and it's not sustainable if you're not focused on lead gen all the time. Besides telling them and reminding them, what else did you do? Like essentially, how do you get agents to be motivated when it's, let's be frank, tough out there and they're probably working harder than ever to get fewer results. And it takes a lot more contacts and a lot more conversations and a lot more transactions to, to, to even have the ones that stick together. Um, tell us a little bit of kind of the secret sauce that you guys did as leaders to model the behavior for your team. Um, that that's, so I was talking to via earlier and, um, you know, we got, I got the call a couple of weeks ago and um, I got the text was like, Hey, uh, let, t let's talk about, you know, what you guys are doing real well right now. And I mentioned to my wife, I was like, Oh, they want to know what we're doing real well. And at the time we were, we were having a, we had a really tough, um, really tough week. She goes, um, well, what are we doing real well? I guess crying, um, you know, just, <laughs> We lost our director of ops um, and lost uh, one of our listing managers and had some agents leave. And um, 
which all of us do, right? This is just, this is what happens when you're running a big level business that's very, you know, that's very different and depending on the market. And, um, and I was like, you know, that's, that is a really good point. But what happens is we show up just because you're having, you know, we're having our different seasons of the business every single morning, you know, the alarm goes off at six, boom, we're out of the bed um, boots on the ground, excited and ready to go, ready to show up in the office as winners. We show up every day and we pour into these people. And that's that's our requirement that if you want to be on this high level team, if you want to succeed with us, if you want to be with the winners, you have to show up. So um, that's 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 the big piece is that we're in here every day and we're doing the work we're putting in the time and we're leading by example. It's so easy for it's so easy for the agents that if they're not here, if they're sitting on the couch or if they're wherever they're working from, that if they're not getting instant results, they feel like defeated. They they feel like what's the purpose? And we have to remind them that every conversation is is an opportunity to build a relationship, and you need to maintain that because that we all know that. You, you don't matter until you matter. You, it's just whoever's going to be in that space with them when it's time is going to be their, be their agent. Can so, I just add something to that? Because that is so smart. And I, I just feel like we need to put a pin in that. That was a really smart comment you made, Brian. I was coaching a team this morning. I, I have a few private clients that I coach. And um, we had this exact conversation and I had, I gave him some homework and I said, your homework is you need to look at, you need to take every agent that's been with you 12 months or more. They're probably watching. I have to check. And, uh, and you need to tell me when they did their first closing, second closing, third closing, what their average income is after one year with you. And I, I had him pull all this data. Right. And, uh, and I said, okay, are you tracking agreements? You have to put, they had to pull agreements as well, buyer rep agreements and then listing agreements. And I said, okay, are you having them report their numbers? And they said, yeah, we're pretty good at that. And it's like, great. Do your agents see the correlation between all the activities they're doing and these results? Can you look at your agents? Do you have a spreadsheet? Do you have a, a dashboard? Anything that shows a correlation between number of either conversations and or agreements signed and or appointments and results. And they're like, well, well, no. I'm like, well, you have the data here. That is what sales management is. All sales management is, is managing to a pipeline and making sure that the agents, not you, you need it too, but that the agents see the correlation between their activities and the results. And you just said it. I thought it was really smart and I wanted to put a pin in that. Well, okay. thank you. So Brian, I wanted to just a couple minutes because I want to make sure we have time for Sarissa, who will be up next, is just talk a little bit about your sphere program. I know your sphere is, is a big pillar for your business. And I know you have an innovative program that you you have to provide a high level of service to your sphere to get repeat referral business. Can you just share a little bit on that? And then if it makes sense, well, we can maybe even do a follow on to that as its own topic, but would love to hear what you're doing specifically with sphere today. Cause I think that's part of your secret sauce as well. Yeah. That, um, so the, when we get into it, we start this relationship with a client. We get in, um, we get real deep with them, and we consider, you know, we call them family almost. Um, and we we uh, we take it very serious that it is a relationship, and we let them know that, and we 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 go above and beyond with understanding this is you know the five star experience, and how can we get better and. We, they we we have a good time in the in the process so we and we check in with them frequently because we want to be there for them we want we want them to feel like we're really there it's never it's never transactional it's never a focus on and this is this is something this is a this is like our our mantra is that it's never about you it's always about them and the second that you take the focus off of them and put it on yourself or onto a commission check, it, I guarantee it's all going to go south. It will never end. It'll never end the way you want it to. So we're really purposeful with the focus 
focuses 100% on them and we check in with them. And these people, they they can see that we care. We genuinely care about their investment and they want to refer us to business. They want to come back to us. Um, we spend a lot of time contacting, staying in touch with our sphere. We, uh, we have several client events that people, they, they're really excited about coming out to them. We got one coming up this Saturday, photos with Santa. And there will be a line out the door with um, with people just showing up to re-engage with us. Well, one thing I want to comment, and this is not uh, taking away anything you said, the things you're talking about are not rocket science. You are doing them, right. though. You're showing up, you're modeling the behavior, you're consistent, and it's literally your the culture of your team, the culture of your leadership. Uh, it, you know, real estate's never been about complexity. It's just doing the same stuff over and over until it gets to the point where it's literally, you know, boring almost because you're at mastery just doing the same thing. And I appreciate that, you know, the speed of the leader, speed of the pack. You guys are out there uh, showing up, you know, instead of telling agents to get get motivated, you're you're doing it with your actions and then you're pouring into your sphere with a consistent touch program and it's all about them. <clears throat> Thank you so much. As I choke, <clears throat> you know, the, uh, I was talking earlier that I'm all I'm, choked you know, up, Brian. <laughs> sure so. I have Let's... that effect, don't I? <laughs> you, know, they, they, you know that involves uh, four levels of luck, and um, you know, they, when if you're cons is consistency, you just have to keep going and keep going and keep going and put yourself in those places, and people will bring you their luck. Is if you just continue to show up, it's it's as soon as you quit, as soon as you say, "Oh, this isn't working." That's that you're right; it doesn't. But as you continue to show up, it just comes to you, and and it's it's awesome. I love watching watching the growth. I love it, Sarissa. You are up. Tell us a little bit about your team in Texas and a little bit about your journey before we jump in. Hey, hi, I'm Sarissa based out of Dallas with a team um, down in Waxahachie, which is about two hours south of Dallas, um, maybe an hour, two at the furthest. And um, yeah, so we cover the DFW Metroplex and we, um, gosh, I would say I've been in the business about as long as Brian. I stopped, started in 2007, but really didn't take it seriously until about 2014 when I realized, okay, I'm gonna do this full time. This is going to be a business and started treating it as such and showing up each day as a business. Um, you know, nine, 10 years later, we have, we've had growth every year until this year. So this year was like, oh, you know, just like, it's one of those where you hate to go backwards. And yet you also learn a lot in those times. And um, so, you know, at the, the most agents we've had, we've been at like 30 agents, um, at the very max, a lot of those obviously in their first launch, you know, period as well. And I'm doing just under 400 units a year. And um, at that time, we've had, you know, we've had as much as three staff on the ground with three VAs. Currently, though, um, about a year ago, actually, November of last year, I let go of my number one producing agent who was just at about 100 units. Um, but we weren't culturally aligned. And I knew that moving forward um, with him wanting to be a managing partner, I was only handing off to my other business partners a problem. And um, I wasn't okay doing that. So we parted ways. And as often happens, um, there's like the trickle effect of people that follow with that person. And um, so probably about... Um, you know, spring of this year, we had sort of the last of the uh, attrition, if you will, and kind of looked up and I was like, holy crap, this is a year of, of skill. Um, this is a year where people have to just be smarter, work smarter. Yes, we have to work hard, but we've been working hard for years. And um, I confessed to my business partners, I was like, guys, like I'm just burned out. Like I'm freaking tired. And I feel like for years, all we've said is like, do more, work harder, da, da, da. And I was just like, like, get, let me breathe for a second. So that was like real life. And I had to, I had to figure out what the plan was to move forward. I love that you said that. Cause I mean, who, 
I'm raising my hand going exactly what you said. We've I all- love that you said it too. I'm like, yeah, I'm just like big. She took the words right out of my mouth. I mean, it does not relate to that, here. you know? Oh, yeah. And it's not that we weren't working hard before, but this is a new kind of hard. And at some point you, it's very easy to just give up even and go like, you know what? I'm banging my head against the wall. So let, that's a great kind of segue to like, what do you think you're doing differently <laughs> this year uh, to, to make sense of this and to not only fuel your team, but fuel yourself. Right. Cause it feels like to, to me, it's a year of redefining who you are as a leader, as well as how your team, you know, you contracted and you're rebuilding um, and to, to have like one fourth of your production walk away and a trailing effect of that. There's, you got to look in the mirror and go, okay, now what? So tell yeah. me what you put in place in terms of actions to kind of to to really make this year what it is and and how you set yourself up for next year as well. Happy to. You know, right or wrong, I actually took a pause on on hiring. I was like, I don't care everyone else is recruiting, I need to make sure that the people that are here feel taken care of and that we've got a plan. So I know I could have done it other ways. That's just what I chose that was best for me. I was also going through some stuff personally. And so like simplicity was important to me and just taking a breather. So um, what what we actually did was I realized I just needed to have more fun. And as a team, we needed to have more fun because it didn't feel fun anymore. And um, And this was always really a fun industry to be in. So we started to do a few things where we gamified our um, like activities so that we would just be like in a happy, healthy competition with each other. I'll give you a couple of examples. Um, Elizabeth Great. Gassos on our team, which she's um, she's now our number one producer and well known within this community here. She loves getting agent to agent referrals. And so she took the concept of 75 hard, which is more of a health challenge that a lot of people know about. And she was like, I'm going to make 75 hard for real estate referrals. And so I have like some examples, but every single day for 75 days, it started out with writing three gratitudes, calling um, 10 people in person or doing a video message. Um, texting or DMing 10 people, mailing five personal notes, like the list goes on. Okay. Like there's maybe seven tasks here that were just about getting real estate referrals for 75 days. And then she was like, you know what? The, the agent on her team, Megan was like, loves open houses. So she made Megan one for open houses. And then she made one for like 75 hard for your database. So it allowed you to just kind of like get into the activities, but gamify it and realize one of her rules was if you missed something today, you had to add it to the next day. So, you know, like I know, and I think in 75 hard, you have to start over. I start over. Okay. Well, I'm not doing that program and that wasn't part of this, but this was, it had, (laughs) it it could compound, right? So you had to make it up. But I just love that like we got into as a team, we got creative in ways to make it fun and compete with ourselves while still getting down and doing the work that that pays off in the end. Well, there's a couple of things that we got to punctuate here that, that I love. Number one, your energy when you're talking about it and the fact that you use the word fun multiple times. This isn't a year that a lot of people would use the word fun. And you honestly found ways to make it fun. It's innovative. I also love that it's tailored to the strengths of each agent, right? If you love open houses, your bingo card or 75 card might have different metrics than if you are door knocking or working expireds or a sphere-based agent, right? So the truth, right, in all of this is, uh, when it doesn't feel like work, that's when uh, that's when you know you've you found the right match based on your personal personality style and the things you like to do. So I love the gamification. Talk to me about the accountability piece. Is it sort of yeah. public shaming? Are people's cards visible? Like how <laughs> um, you know? Are, do they kind of hold themselves um, accountable, or do they have oh. ways that they report? Yeah, I'll give an example. Our most recent contest, if you will, that we did, we called it like a marathon and a half marathon. 
and this was inspired by all of you guys that were running and this was not happening over here. So um, <laughs> we did like a marathon was 400 conversations in a month and a half marathon was 200 conversations in a month. And they got to self-select in because for some people, 200 real estate conversations a month felt scary and big because they hadn't been doing that. And so they self-selected into the half marathon. And then um, the game was every single day you report into our Slack channel um, for our Q4 marathon, you report into our Slack channel, like how many conversations you had that day. And then one of our VAs has a little tracker and each person. So it was like Sarissa Jornot, Elizabeth Gassos, Megan Noble. We all had our little like runner character. And then she'd say like, Sarissa is at 123 out of 200 conversations this month. And so everyone knew where we were at. And we did like a silly little reward. Like, I think I said, if you finish, no, when you finish, you'll get a $50 Amazon gift card. And when we all finish, each of us additionally gets another, like, I forget what we made. So, so did you have like a horse race dashboard? Yes. Like, did you show that? Okay. Yes. So it was basically- I love that though. So there's a, there's a personal, uh, there's a personal goal or personal reward, but then there, if the whole team doesn't do it, they don't get the the kicker, which is yes. a, sec, a second I like reward. That too. I wanted the kicker because I'm like, I don't want anyone to be left behind and like not be encouraged. And so the goal was that we were all encouraging each other. And yet you still needed to finish, like you had to finish the race for yourself, but you also wanted to finish it to not let the team down. So that was just fun and easy. And our, we reported it in Slack, the VAs tracked it like easy peasy, but fun was really like my word for this year. I love in Sarita and I are an ex MBA right now, which like big fan, I would totally recommend looking into that, um, with Chris Suarez. And one of the things he talked about was fun. And he talked about, about like having fun just for the joy of what you're doing. Like you actually enjoy it. And then there's the type of fun that you have when you're in a meaningful, like maybe it's the fun you have in a transaction because you're helping someone. And then there's the fun that you get just from learning. And so I've been thinking about like, what is it in my life, whether it's in work or outside of work, that's giving me those buckets of fun. And so this year I started playing tennis because I realized I didn't have a hobby that was fun. And I realized when I go out and do that, then I have so much more energy to come back to work. And, um, because my bucket's been filled. So yeah, it's been my word to keep us going this year. I love it. One question that, um, that people who are listening going, wow, I kind of want to do that. I want to start the gamification. I want to come up with our own version of 75 hard. How do you, how do you start, especially if not every agent's on board and they're not used to accountability or tracking results? Like, how do you get going advice to someone who's thinking about it might have this as part of their business plan, but doesn't know how to get their agents bought in. We let people self-select in. And part of the reason of doing that was because most people aren't going to be like the only one not doing the contest. And, and yet we wanted them to self-select in so that there was the buy-in. And here's the deal. Like, let's just say somebody chose not to self-select in. Well, what they're going to find is like, oh, gee, everyone's, the stuff they're doing is actually working. Maybe I should do that as well. And right. so I'm not like the kind of leader that's like, everyone's going to be forced to do something because then I feel like you're just pulling teeth. And like, I don't got time for that. If you want to be here, be here. If you don't like, I really don't care. That sounds mean, but I just, I have enough kids. I don't need more. Um, so, you know, I think that that was part of it too, is, is, um, luckily everyone did choose to self-select in, but they chose different levels. And we, we did that for a reason so that they didn't, if, if, for example, if I had chose the 400 conversations in one month during the month of November, and I know I was traveling and blah, blah, blah. Like I would have failed and known that I was going to fail going into it, which means I wouldn't have had the buy-in, which means I wouldn't have tried. So I think that was part of it. Yeah. They're adults and, and you're making it fun. And at some point I put in the comments just now, there's a little bit of FOMO, right? If you choose not to do it and everyone else is doing it, one, they're having fun and you're left out, but two, they're, they're seeing Getting results. The reward of all and those actions. Yeah. And our pipelines look good. I mean, it's not popping today. Like we all, we want it to, but some of it is. And I love what, love what the future looks like. 
Awesome. Well, and the other thing too, is that you're helping them achieve their goals that way, because like when you put your goals on them, it just doesn't work. And so if they're, if they're, they don't feel like being a go-getter this month, like that's your goal, not theirs. Right. Everybody yeah. has different seasons. Maybe yeah, they, smart. they, they, they want to go on vacation and, and get Johnny braces versus the other person who wants to sell 10 houses a month. Right. Everyone has different goals. Um, so going, go ahead. Oh, well, the only thing I was going to add, I was actually talking with one of my, uh, my agent partners today is one thing I really liked about the marathon contest being a month long was that it wasn't so long that it was like a whole quarter and you'd get, you'd forget about it, but it wasn't like a day or a week. And with a month, even during the month of December or November, when you do have travel plans, you can figure out how to still hit your goals, knowing that you're going to be out because you have a whole month to do it. And a lot of people are getting sick right now. You can be down for three days and still make up your goals. So that that was one key component that I think, especially during this season, this holiday season has worked for us is having it a longer contest where you can work with your schedule. Absolutely. So the last question for you, Sarah says going into 2024, are you going to go with the same sort of operation gamification, have fun, any, any changes you have planned, or is it just going to be more of the same because it's working? Yeah, it's working. And I mean, I will say like, I'm getting back on the recruiting bandwagon. I've, I've, I've taken a little break long enough. It's time, um, you know, but, uh, but no, it'll be more of the same, but I love the creativity of our agents because they come up with ideas that we can all learn from. And if anybody wants what we've already come up with, I'm happy to share. Um, I'm sure with Elizabeth's permission, she won't care either, but if you would be interested, um, my email is just Sarissa at place.com and I'm happy to share Either the seven. And then I want to drop our email, powerplaybooks at place.com. If they email us, we'll make sure they get it and we'll make That's sure you get it. Yeah. Perfect. Well, thank you so much for your great ideas. I think um, it, it gives everyone some, some really fun, uh, actionable takeaways that they can implement pretty easily, um, especially with the one month sprints. I, I love that. And you can focus on what, what you want to focus on. Maybe it's buyer consults, maybe it's contacts, maybe you want to do more with social. You could do it for where, whatever you want to focus on and, and have multiple sprints too. So I thank you that. so much. That's our new idea. Thanks, Sarita. <laughs> <laughs> you're welcome. TM. Um, Via, you're up. Let's go ahead and segue to the second portion of our call. And before we do, Brian, Sarissa, thank you so much. You, I, you I know I could have talked to each of you for a couple hours. So I'm hopeful that this is just the beginning and we'll continue to have you guys on to share what's working in 2024. And with, with that, Mia, I'm going to go ahead and turn it to you. Thank you, you guys, so much. And we appreciate your time. All right. I'm going to pull um, Missy. Can you? There she goes. Hi. Hello. <laughs> if you guys all don't know Missy Webb, you need to. She's Well, you're going to get to know her. She's an amazing human. Missy's in uh, Oklahoma City. And um, Missy, when did we meet? Like four or five years ago? I'm trying to remember that exact date. I think so. Um, I think so. It was right before you started the leadership mentoring Facebook group. Yeah. So right before probably 2019 ish. That sounds about right. Yeah. Maybe 2018, but probably 2019. Yeah. Uh, that was a fun group. I'm, I'm, you know, I don't know. I was talking to Ben the other day. I'm like, what, what happened with that? He's like, I don't know life. You know, we just, who knows what happened to that, but, um, the, the reason I, I, there's a lot of reasons I wanted to talk to you today, Missy, but one of them is, is that I think you have a really good um, arc, you know, a story arc of your team. And I, I think a lot of people are going to relate. And I, I have a, a, a specialty, I think, in interviewing people during the during. So it's really easy to interview somebody after they've accomplished, you know, all the big things, but it's very interesting to me when I'm talking with them during that, you know, when they're in that, that, and I think that's, that's what's happening to you. I think this is going to be a phenomenal year for you and a year that's not going to be a phenomenal year for a lot of people. I think you're right. Yeah. So, so I'd, I'd like to start, first of all, tell everybody a little bit of background, but then, then what I want, want us to do is hone in on where were you two years ago today, you know, and kind of start there and, and work our way through the last 24 months. But okay. just tell everybody about yourself for a second. Um, Missy, Oklahoma city. I'm married. We are a husband and wife team. However, everybody really knows that we're not a husband and wife team. <laughs> um, 
Yeah. Something Hi, I should know or? <laughs> Hi, Steve, honey. Um, we've got two kids. We, I grew up, um, that's all. Okay. Let me, let me actually introduce myself. I am a driver. I'm a fiery woman. I grew up a long time thinking that women belonged in the kitchen and I didn't really discover who I was or how powerful I could be until my very late thirties. Yeah, that's great. I'm glad I just got started. first bumps, by the way, yeah, the way you said that. It's amazing. So, you know, so you're in Oklahoma city, you've got a couple of kids. Yes. Um, how long have you been in real estate? I've been in real estate since, uh, okay, so licensed since 2013. This is a fun story. But in 2009, I bought a house here with my husband, and I started by answering phones at the front desk, which is my lowest job match. And so you you worked at a front desk from 2009 to 2015? Well, I, I took a break and had some babies. And okay. uh, uh, let's see, in 2010, my husband was an engineer, 17 years. And there were layoffs. He lost his job. So we lost health benefits. We lost all those things. Um, and I had set aside $2,000 while I was home with babies because I was going to uh, like do no work and drive a luxury vehicle and have a baby on a hip. So we took that money and got him licensed. And I did what I do. And I just started building behind the scenes. Got his phone to ring. Okay, say this. Okay, do that. Okay, let's do this. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I remember I would be nursing babies at night and posting Craigslist ads back when you could put hyperlinks in there so that mm -hmm. his phone would ring the next day. Okay, got it. So so you got into real estate um in what what year did you say 2015? Well, I got licensed in 2013, but we started doing this in 2010. So okay. Right. 2010. Got it. Got it. Right. Cause you're right. Got it. Got it. What, what prompted you to start a team and when did you start your team? Uh, okay. So here comes all the candid stuff. I started a team because it's what everybody told me I was supposed to do. We got yeah. to a certain level and you know, there's this red book out there and everyone says you, you you're just referring to the this. millionaire real estate agent book by Gary Keller and Jay Papasan. Correct. The red yeah. book, the, the real estate Bible. Um, and I, 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 uh, I started building a team when we got to about 50 units and we needed help. We needed some help. That's so. a good reason to start a team. That's good. Did it look fun at least? Like, I know everyone was telling you you should do it, but it, it did it kind of seem fun? It, yeah, I think so. Okay. I, mean, so fun. Kind of I, I love growing and building. So that was exciting. Yeah. I don't, I'm, I don't know if I would say there was a lot of joy in it. I was proud yeah. of it. It was yeah. exciting. Okay. So, you know, fast forward. So you, you actually, no, I don't want to fast forward from it. Cause I, I want to walk us into kind of your, your, what's happened the last two years. So, you know, you start a team, you know, and, and is it safe to say that you kind of got to a plateau and hit a ceiling, you know, that, that, that you were Ooh. kind of bumping along. Is it safe to say that, you know, that, that you got to a certain point with agents and GCI and units that were, were somewhat stagnant? Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, I had three years right before, um, partnering with place where, uh, there was a 97, uh, 101, 98. It was, that was my ceiling. And then I couldn't keep anybody talented because I wasn't a great leader. I didn't have great systems. I thought value was leads and splits. It was, yeah, the same groundhog day every, every year, same thing, same story. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's what I love about your story. Cause I think a lot of people relate. Like there's a certain point where you're like, I've got to do something different. Yeah. So I'm gonna, but it looked yeah. like I was winning. I mean, here's Missy with her really cool, successful team. Right. 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 Like I I was winning. So so let's kind of start this this story with all of that backstory. With about two years ago, why don't you kind of paint the picture of what what did your business look like? What did your team look like back then? Let's dive in. Okay. So um, husband and wife, I was not really in production. I helped my family and friends, but I get to cheat on that a little bit because I'm married. So mm -hmm. Steve Webb, amazing. Um, and he was handling our production. We had one other agent. It was the first, I felt like super talented, like, oh, what do I do with this person um, mm -hmm. on, on our team? And she 
was closing, I guess, around 30 to 40 a year. And then um, right before partnering with Place, I had taken on an expansion team, didn't know anything about it, it ignored all the warnings of needing to have your systems and, and foundational things in place because, you know, surely I can figure this out. Um, so I had just gotten um, an expansion location and then had two new agents. Let's see, my cost of sales was out of control. My splits were out of control. I remember. So, so hold on. I was, so basically yeah. it's you, okay. I'm going to say this, don't get mad, but it was no, basically you, say it. you as a producer in the name of your husband, um, you know, who was handling those leads very closely. So it was basically one producer outside. We, of we were one producer. Yeah. yeah. We, we always joked that I fish and he reels it in. Yeah. So you, so basically one producer outside of you guys, a couple new agents, and then an expansion location you just signed on. Yeah. Okay. Now when we say cost of sale for those of, those of our friends that are, are listening and watching this, can, can we, can you explain what that means? Cause you know, I want them to understand that means the splits that we're charging agents. Yes. And so also, uh, agent referrals, we were agent referral heavy because I had done a lot of networking mm-hmm. and different events. And so um, the I had uh, partners on 70-30 splits for their sphere. I know, I know, it hurts so much. Okay. <laughs> my chest tightens. And my expansion person, um, I had a lot of ego in that. I had a lot of ego. And so I agreed to 70-30 splits so that I could expand. Um, mm-hmm. And then... Uh, 33, almost, almost 40% of our business um, was agent referrals. So there's 25% also off the top. It was, it was wild. Okay. So let's do quick math for everybody because a lot of people don't count agent referrals as this. So when we talk about cost of sale or cost of goods sold or splits, same thing, right? What we're talking about is your gross commission income, GCI. So if your commission checks, you know, $10,000 is is just an example. And there's a referral fee off the top of that, call it, you called it 25%. So 2,500 off the top. And then maybe you're 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 sharing that with your agent. Maybe you're 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 splitting it. Whatever. We we always want to see a cost of sale on a team of no higher than fifty percent. That that's certainly our benchmark would be fifty percent. And the reason for that, and I know most of you know this, but I just want to be sure everybody's you know talking the same language, is if your expenses are 30 percent, that leaves you the rest of that as profit. And so if your cost of sale goes over fifty percent, it gets pretty hard to make a decent profit on a team, right? What mm-hmm. Missy's talking about that I think is worth pointing out is that agent referral commissions count against cost of sale. And a lot of you guys aren't counting it that way. I actually wasn't. I actually wasn't uh, until a few years ago. So I'm assuming a lot of you weren't either. So I don't know if you guys know that. Get on, get on chat and let me know. Are you counting? I'm curious. How many of you are counting agent referral commissions in your cost of sale? I'd be curious to know. So what, what Missy's saying is she was at a 71% percent cost of sale two years ago. That's a very, very hard hole to crawl out of. I, I, I'm coaching. To, that is a very challenging thing to do. And so listen carefully because you are at a 71% cost of sale with really, really tough splits. And I want, I want to walk through, you know, and that was what you did about 140 units that year. Yeah. Can I tell you something really funny? I want you to tell me everything. Yeah. My claim to fame is I actually, am I allowed to say a bad word on here? Yeah. Okay. My claim to fame is when I um, submitted my P&L and all my financials and exploration, I actually submitted it. Like I didn't know how to, I had no financial literacy. So I literally gave them logins to everything. Here's my bank account. Here's my command. Yeah. Here's my SBS. And I, I signed it. I'm so sorry for the shit show you're about to receive. A lot of so people did an apology letter with it. Yeah. No, no, you're a good girl. You good. you're you worried about it. 850 GCI, right? At 140 mm-hmm. units, 70% cost of sale. I yep. don't know what your expenses are were, but you know, it it's 30% expenses, you would have zero profit. 
So basically, I most teams I see, you, you would be at least at 30%. So I, I don't want to go out on a limb here, but were you were you losing money? Were you break even? So I, I'm, I've always been pretty lean okay. on expenses. I'm about 20% expenses, 19 to 20%. Um, and I okay, didn't so you're really a little make any money. I, I had this, this team and it looked great. And I personally barely netted six figures that year. Yeah. And I was tired and burned out and yeah, that, that's a very typical story um, and situation that I they come across almost daily, right? And that's why, that's why I wanted you here, Missy. So thank you for sharing all of that. I really thank you. So so let's walk into, um, you know, what did the year look like after that? What, what did you do to change cost of sale, you know, top line revenue, GCI, cost of sale, uh, agent growth, you know, all of it. Tell, tell us all about that year. Sure. So um, when when I partnered, and by the way, I ignored the first phone call I got about it. And then about three days later, I was ready to quit. And I got another call and I answered. <laughs> and I still have the voicemail saved on my phone because this is, this is life changing. Um, so I signed two years ago, December 4th is my anniversary. Oh. And uh, my go live date was February of 2022. So mm -hmm. I knew that the very first thing I had to figure out was my financials um, because now all of a sudden, and you'll probably get some tears in this story, but if place is my partner, I need place to also be whole and I need my partners to also be, be whole. And so now I'm not just doing this for me, I'm doing this for others. So that was the very first thing I did. And, um, you know, there are so many different things. Um, I couldn't read financials. And I was embarrassed, but I had my financial one-on-ones every every month. So I started asking the questions, um, you know, what do I do about this? What do I do about that? So our first plan of attack was cut every expense that you can. So we did, but I was already pretty lean. And then next is, um, you know, adjusting all of the splits. So I went and re-recruited my entire team with this opportunity. And um, it's interesting because at the time I also had a little ego here. Um, I didn't lose anybody. Now they're not all still here. I've got a couple right. still here, but um, I, I've i changed those, got everybody on different splits. And then I implemented transaction fees. Mm -hmm. That was the biggest okay. one. Okay. I'm never gonna turn down agent referrals. Yeah, of course. I had to do something else. Yeah, of course. I love that. Okay. So you, yep. you implemented transaction fees. Um, you, um, you got financially literate, right? Uh, what about growth? So I started recruiting like crazy because all of a sudden I, I have, uh, all right, here, here comes some emotions. I care so, so much about other people. And when I would cast a vision, I meant it but I wasn't a promise keeper. I was not a leader with integrity. Oh, I relate. Yeah. Right, you know, right? So then I partner with Place and all of a sudden like, oh, I can offer you health benefits. I can offer you a path to team within a team. I can open any door. So I just started talking to everyone about it. And I grew the team um, to about 15. Now this doesn't mean I was a great recruiter. This just means I went and started recruiting people. You basically went from one to 15. Really. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, I guess you might've had a, a few new agents, but yeah. Okay. Yep. So I started talking to a lot of people um, and it was fantastic. However, uh, it takes a while to implement things. I still wasn't foundational. I still hadn't uh, implemented all of the different value stacks that place offers. So it was kind of shaky but the, now all of a sudden we're coming into 2022 and we were so busy and everything looked good. So it didn't really reveal all of the messiness that was behind the scenes there. Um, <clears throat> that's what this year did, but we'll get to that. 
And I think what's important for everybody to understand is, you know, when we talk about being a promise keeper, what, what we're talking about is, is, is casting a vision and promising certain values to agents that you're recruiting or that are already on the team and then delivering on them. And, you know, I will say in Missy's defense, because I, I feel like I'm speaking for myself, Missy, you know, I actually use that word promise keeper. I didn't know you used it either. But speaking for myself, you know, it, we believe it when we're saying it, like we, we believe we're going to, we're going to have the ability and the bandwidth to create whatever it is we're promising. So it's not like we're lying, right? It's that it's that we, one person cannot do everything that needs to happen there to grow that fast. If you want to, if you want to add one agent a year, maybe, you know, two agents a year, but not, not 15, you can't, it'd be, I haven't met the person that can individually handle adding 15 agents in one year and providing the value stack that they need. Like, I don't know if you guys have met him. I haven't met him yet. And I talked to a lot of teams. So I just wanted everybody to understand why that's so important yeah. that you said that. Because so many it's people so are important. really... Yeah. Okay. So you ended last year. Okay. With all of that said, anything else that you did last year that you think is noteworthy? Uh, well, I... I... I did the work. I, I started um, learning how to coach my partners. I learned a lot about emotional intelligence, leadership, myself. Oh, good grief. Um, you know, I thought I was a great leader before. And then you start actually learning about leadership and all these other things. And you think, oh, wow. Yeah, um, that's right. We re I really didn't have any productivity rhythms. I had a team of lead receivers felt like everything was always on my shoulders. Um, and then I struggled a little bit with resentment, um, which I, I, I'm not proud of, but I did because I felt like, you know, I'm, I'm doing all this. Why, why is all the business coming from me? And why am I so tired? And so 2022 was, um, it, it was just, it was a fast year. And it was a year of kind of messy and chaotic growth of implementing all of these things. We ended finally hit a million in GCI for the first time. Congrats. Um, that was phenomenal. And I had a moment sitting at my desk and I had a couple of happy tears and then immediately started thinking about, okay, well, I still need to do this. You know how we are. I so you went from, yeah, I love it. So, so I'll highlight it, you know, for you, because I think it's so powerful. You went from 140 to about 170 units. Mm -hmm. You went from, you know, give or take 840, 850 to a million GCI. You went from one to, you know, 13 to 15 agents, right? Cost of sales. I got That's it. The biggie. To... Tell, tell everybody you had a 71% cost of sale the year before. Well, what did you end last year with? 58 last year. So good. It's still higher than I liked, but it was so phenomenal. I worked yeah. so hard on it. So hard. And two admin, right? Did you add those mm -hmm. admin in last year? Yeah. I, so I, I had one just kind of everything admin. And then last year we separated TC and admin. Yeah. I love that. Which place helped train by the way, which was yeah. phenomenal yeah. leverage. Now I, I want to go into this year, but I, I think, and you know, you and I talked before, so I have permission to push you a little bit. You said any, any way <laughs> you want to, this is me reminding that you said, yep. okay. that's fine. Um, because, um, cause I'm going to, I'm going to push a button. I'm going to push a button with you because I do think that I'm so proud of you and I'm so excited we're sharing your vision. This is a cautionary tale, however, on what happens when you do take your gas off of the the growth pedal. And and I'm not saying it was a wrong decision, Missy. I am saying like I want to walk into what we're get, what are you going to end this we'll go back, but what are you going to end this year with? 100 and I think we're going to end at 112. You 112 units. Okay. Mm -hmm. And, uh, about 10 team members, right? So, yep. you know, you've top graded, probably added some, is that fair? Yep. That's fair. But not a big growth push, right? No. no, not at all. Cost of sale was what? 52. Yeah. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. And I, you know, I, you know, I love you. I I'm pushing you and showing that because we went from, you know, um, I want everybody to understand this. You went from 140 to 170 to 112. The difference mm -hmm. is the foundation that you're at now. Now, what are you going to do next year, do you think? Now I'm going to take off. And this is, um, 
I know you asked me if I regretted not recruiting. In some ways I did. You know, I'm not I'm not going to buy my kids some huge vacation. Um, you know, I'm not going to buy another investment property this year. And I had some goals and I, I didn't keep the commitment to myself. But I also had one of the hardest years personally. I lost my mom, um, you know, dementia, a, lar- a large part of the year. But what was interesting, I feel like this was a gift this year because it did slow down a little bit. And I was able to um, really inspect the different things. Mm-hmm. And so all of the all of the things that looked good or were too fast, too messy, way out of alignment, um, all of those things, uh, like we, I got rid of those. Mm-hmm. I think if if I think about my business now, um, I've cut all the expenses I can cut. I'm at twenty four percent profit, mm-hmm. and there's nothing else to cut. My Cost of sales is 52. Um, I have solid, committed agents. We have been working on lead generating. We've been working on our uh, productivity rhythms, our meetings together, our power-ups, all of those things. There is nothing else that I need to fix in my business. And I'm so proud of that this year. Yeah, you you absolutely so made a great decision for you, and I'm proud of you too. I did. Like, I want I want to I want to share that. Like, I think you did make the right decision. You were able to be there with your mom, and and just, just like Sarissa made the right decision to to yeah. pause a little. bit. It's not a judgment. It is also the numbers do show what happens. That's why I shared that yeah. because you know um, growth is just stabilizing. Meaning, you know, you have to recruit. Everybody thinks, oh, I I don't want to have this big, huge team. There is just going to be a certain amount of attrition and retention. That's just, you know, some people would say it's 30, 35%. Some people's lower, some people's higher. And the fact is you just have to recruit to replace that if nothing else. Yeah. You know, and and I can tell you, if you want to dig into the emotion of it, there was uh, one time a couple months ago, I have a, have a text called Missy's two dads, just because I'm weird. Um, but I texted him because I was looking at my projections. Oh, Chris Suarez and Ben Kinney, you mean? Or yeah, that's yeah, the yeah. Place, Missy's the co-founders. Yeah. yeah, sorry, Missy's two dots. But I, I am the kind that as soon as I figure something out, I'm going to tell on myself first. I was always that way as a kid. So I was looking at my my numbers, my projections, my pendings, and I thought, oh my gosh, I don't think I'm I'm going to make it next month. I think I'm going to have to dip into my reserves, and of course. I'm also a promise keeper to my partners, not just my local partners, but all of my partners. So I texted and I was like, guys, I'm so sorry. I let you down. I, you know, and it was just this heartfelt thing. And then the next day I found out that an outbound referral I had made to another place partner somewhere pended and it was a 1.4 million referral. And so I didn't have to dip in my reserves. Uh, so when you asked me if I regretted not recruiting, I did in that moment very much. I very love that. Much. So, you know, one of the things that you did, cause we, we got a great question and I think it segues well into what I was going to ask anyway, you know, we, we got a question that what is your value proposition for recruiting? And you know, I'm assuming when you say you stabilized this year, what you did is you created massive value uh, around that so that you can go to town and grow and expand next year. Is that true? Yes. What, you know, why should I join your team? If I'm an experienced agent, Missy, tell me why I should, uh, I should join, I should join your team. Oh, (laughs) you should join my team because this business is hard and it costs a lot. And it's lonely sometimes. And if you could step into an environment where we care about you more than anything and your net income per hour and giving you your time back and your quality of life, that that's what we do. It's not just me locally, Missy, how much I love you and how much I become a student of you to help you unlock every ceiling. I'm place and I have every door you could possibly want opened. And I got your expenses covered while we do that. 
Well, I, I like that. That sounds great, Missy. But, you know, I sell, you know, 20, 25 homes a year on my own. And so I'm just wondering, like, I mean, would I make less or more on your team? I think you would make more. How? By having all of your expenses covered. And by this is so exciting, by the way, I'm like, I'm nervous and my heart's going. I'm like, oh, my God, this is so fun. I, know, I didn't tell you we role playing. Oh, no, I don't care. Um because we cover all of your expenses and we give you more time so that you can do more lead generating and do more business. We have a, a whole lead generation model that I can show you that'll help you understand how we do that. So how many homes do you think I could sell on your team? You? If I sell 20 or 25 on my own, how many can I sell on your team? Well, before you have leverage and you're showing partner, you could probably double that. And then once we help you leverage with a showing partner, I bet you could probably hit a hundred by yourself. A hundred. Oh my goodness. Sure. That's sure. amazing. Absolutely. So and never uh, to dinner with your kids. So I'm hearing, um, uh, you know, value is, um, camaraderie collaboration, um, community, um, I'm hearing systems, processes, um, uh, I'm hearing leverage in the form of showing agents, probably admin that we didn't say probably at, well, I know tech cause I know our systems, yep. um, tech income per hour. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And, and things that basically boost their business. Right. So I think the focusing question to Pamela and anybody watching the, the question I think about on my team a lot is, you know, what can we offer to agents that could get them selling double what they're selling on their own? And that, that's a focusing question you can ask yourself for experienced agents. And then what I do now, I, you know, I'm at place. And so we have a lead gen wheel. So I look at the, the six different types of lead generation and I back out of that and I say, okay, what can we do to get them? Um, any agent who comes to me, what can I do? What can I provide to have them selling double to their sphere with me versus without me? What can I provide to them and give to them to have them sell double at open houses what they would do than they would do by themselves, right? And I just reverse reverse out of that and, and focus on that. And we have internal meetings on that. We uh, In our case, we get to use all the place models and systems, but if you're not with place, you can still do that. Did I miss anything, Missy? Um. I think also just opportunities for the future play. I feel like anywhere you want to go, do you want to be a coach? Do you want to be a trainer? Do you want to build your own team? Do you just want to be a highly profitable solo agent who's leveraged and never misses anything with their kids? But anywhere you want to go with place, you can do it with me. You can do it. I'll open the door for you. Yeah. I love that. That's awesome. Big part of it. What uh, are you you're going to share your goals for next year? Yeah, so we're going to do 175. Okay. I'm going to uh hit the 30 net profit club. Okay. That that's we call that the 30 club, so that's 30% or higher um uh in profit, okay? Yep. Uh and I'm going to uh, expand into Tulsa. And I am going to um my I'm going to net 10 agents next year. So. I love it. You know, I own, uh, I own seven properties there. Find me more. I want okay. to buy more. Yeah. I will. Great. Well, Missy Webb, we cannot, we can we, we all want to follow you and we're all going to follow you. So thank you for sharing. And we'll, we'll have you back and, and keep visiting with you so that we can kind of okay. follow your progress. And just thank you for your openness and sharing all of that with everybody. I know everybody who's live and also who's going to watch this on replay is really going to appreciate it. I hope so. All right, everybody. Well, we will see you next Wednesday for a very asked for um, segment. We're going to have a couple people talking about the financial model to bring teams and recruit teams and merge and, and acquire teams. So, so taking, if you're a team, um, you know, basically partnering up or acquiring another team. What do the economics look like? We have two people coming on, one of whom we've had on before, Sarah Tadlock, and the other one's Travis Bard. So we're really excited to uh, to go over that next week. And thank you for your time. And we'll see you then.